There are six basic needs the who and you requires to thrive. Certainty, variety, significance, connection, growth, and contribution. In business, it is sometimes hard to balance these essentials with the demands of the workplace. A reason being is some work environments have adopted methods of operation, which leads to a culture rife with the complex of superiority. In his book, The End of Average, Todd Rose did something fascinating. He answered why many jobs around the country function in the way they do. A man by the name of Frederick Winslow Taylor radically transformed the way companies were ran in the 19th century. He was quoted, it is thoroughly illegitimate for the average man to start out to make a radically new machine or method or process to replace one which is already successful. Why? He believed that an individual must never come before the system. Soon, this dramatic shift was even furthered by a psychologist, Edward Thorndike, who had the idea that superiority and hierarchy should be implemented. With such modification, those basic human needs were stripped and the end of blossoming through individuality had befallen them. The subordinate role gives credibility to the all too usual office lingo such as low on the totem pole or pecking order and the mindset of things requiring a little more brain power as being beyond my pay grade. This belongs to the 19th century. Even though at times I worked under some of those conditions, I maintained good standing, freeing my shoulders from any cumbersome chip without having to align myself with that paradigm. I mastered the confidence I had in taking my own values to account. I also mastered the thing I call the hand slap. Yes, the hand slap, kind of like what you give a child's hand to keep it away from danger. And while this is not by any means a physical slap, it is without a doubt undeniable. Sometimes it's needed to keep the heavy hand of a superiority complex from being misplaced over top our heads. I've observed two main ways the office superiority complex manifests, the obvious way and the ambiguous way. Both trigger a different reaction. The obvious manifestation triggers the immediate verbal reaction, oh, well, let me tell you something, and the ambiguous will trigger our defense mechanisms via passive-aggressive behavior, oftentimes subconsciously. Any reaction would have you overcompensating to make the statement that you are just as good, if not better. But this is the wrong culprit. No one is denying what is recognized in you. Superiority looks only to exert power, clout, or dominance to make their selves feel good and is not only reserved for management. It's also seen in coworkers with the most tenure or the colleague all too familiar with the super supervisor or from the aspiring one to become who they have always viewed as powerful. In keeping my basic six needs in mind, I also remained clear on what values were needed to better achieve feeling great each workday. Once I identified respect, integrity, and freedom as my key values, I was ready to rock. Okay, so I know you're screaming for an example. And while I'll spare you all my experiences, I will leave you with a quick story you can either relate to or sit back and be glad it wasn't you. For some time, I worked at a job highly based on fear. When changes were implemented, you'd often hear management say it's for our job security, but there always seemed to be someone on the verge of either losing their position or their minds. If ever called into the office, one or both would soon follow. This particular day, I was comfortably at my desk during my lunch break. Now we had a computer system which allowed those who needed to know our status to see where we were. And yes, I think the potty was included, but don't quote me. So as I'm enjoying having a moment of my own time, I get a call from not one, but two supervisors. Hi, Erica, we need you to come in, please. My lunch hour should have been my moment of certainty. Panic flooded in, but I knew I didn't have to leave my lunchtime to report to them. I decided to honor my dignity value and responded, I will be in after I'm done with having lunch. Hear that hand slap? Did I still need to go into the office? Yes but I was able to do so with courage because I honored the dignity that was at risk of being violated through having my moment of certainty tried. My response set an example that while I will comply with the request, it will be after I comply with my own valued needs so that I can be at peace, leveraging the way in which I show up and communicate. 
Feelings of unease often show up when we are passive aggressive or when we're confused to the culprit. And it may give immediate relief to set the record straight, but it's like empty calories. It doesn't provide the proper nutrients to feed our values, which are necessary to protect the emotions that are fulfilled by our core needs being met. We must not leave our emotion to fend for itself because if left to its own vices, it will turn. I discern that my respect would turn to resentment for guidance, my integrity to arrogance for protection, and freedom to anxiety for the sake of escape. With every election season, it brings attention to the tax dollar. Although the components that shape our identity is tax exempt, they can become taxing if left unexplored, unresolved, and unattended. Being a good steward over our identity's sustenance is only proper and, dare I say, the most superior thing you can do.